Hey friends, welcome to another studio vlog. Um, it's a bit chilly now in the studio. I have the heater on, it's getting very um, wintry, autumnal, so um, stuff is taking a bit longer. Um, in the studio and I'm ferrying a lot of my pots back and forth to the house in the studio that can get really cold but um, I just wanted to um, pop on today and just show you lovely folks what I'm doing um, so I'll switch you around so I spent last week throwing a load of stuff so I have there's actually more in the house but this is the stuff I'm working on today I have lots of um, teacups mugs um, these teacups uh, have a, like a three-piece kind of set, so I have the mug, a little strainer that goes inside, um, a lid for the cup, and it means that when you um, brew your tea, any um, it's, it's for loose leaf tea, sorry, it's a strainer, I can you can pop it on the lid, but I'll show you once I've trimmed everything how those work. Um, I've got some juices and... Also, I just trimmed up these dishes. I'm gonna pop these in the house soon. Um, and then I'm just pulling some handles because I need to attach handles to the mugs and teacups. So yeah, I just thought um, I'd show you how I do the handles. I've done most of them, but I was like, oh, I forgot to film. So I um, might pop you up here. Um, yeah, so I just wedge up a bit of clay. I never like measure how much clay I use, I mean, um, you can obviously make, if you're making loads of handles, you can have like a bigger piece, but I always find it a bit too heavy if I have like a big piece of clay. So I usually have something like that, probably about 500 grams, 600 grams. Um, so then I just kind of um, shape it into a bit of a point. This is where I'm going to pull the handle from. And I basically just run the tap and start to pull. So you might not be able to hear me once I put the tap on, but... Let's see. Yeah, so this is the tap, and then I'm just gonna pull. So I first try to get the majority of the clay down into a handle. It's a bit weird to see my mouth here, but anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll go. Um, yeah, so I get the majority of the clay coming down into a handle, um, and I keep wetting my hand. Maybe I'll turn it off now that my hand's wet. I keep wetting my hand just so that I don't have any friction when I'm pulling the handle. Sometimes if your hand is too dry, the handle can just come off in your hand. Um, yeah, so I'm just pulling now. And I like to pull my handles not completely round. I have them a little bit flatter. I find that a little bit more comfortable in the hand. And sometimes you can find that you have a bit of a blob at the end. I like to cut that off just because sometimes if I have it a bit at like this kind of little blob at the end, sometimes my hand can get caught in that and the whole thing comes off. So yeah, that's about the right length, I would say. And then what I like to do is also just put my little, a little bit of a um, groove, really slight groove in the handle. I just think it looks nicer, just so that you can, it just doesn't look, you know, you have kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just like a little indent and it makes it a bit more comfort comfortable to hold and looks a bit nicer. And then, yeah, so that's it. And then I just cut it off from the top. Um, and then I'll, I'll take you over. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it's a bit cold in here, so the um, lens is a bit um, steamy. So anyway, yeah, that's the handle. Um, this one is for the teacup, so I basically just um, put it down onto the board, the thick side, so the top first, and then I just let the rest hang. I'll, cut, I'll show you now. So I just basically um, attach the top, the fatter part, and then I just let that flop over, and that just gives you a um, kind of classic handle shape. And then these are the ones I shape over the board, so they're kind of a more D shape, I would say, whereas this is more like, um, kind of there's a bigger part at the top, and then it kind of um, uh, tapers down. So yeah, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have about three more to do. So I've just finished those handles, they're just drying in the house. Um, I'm going to start trimming my um, some of the thrown um, pieces, so the, the tea strainers, teacups, lids and juicer. Um, yeah, so I've 
These ones have popped off the bat, so I can trim those and I'm waiting for these to dry a little bit just because they're kind of still stuck to the bat. I just don't want to like force them off and distort them. So I'm just going to wait for them to pop off once they're a bit drier. So yeah, I'll show you these. Um, so yeah, so this is my setup. I actually sta um, throw standing up. So yeah, so I kind of have my pedal there and I, yeah, just throw standing up. Sorry, the f this, my... <laughs> The floor is disgusting. I need to mop. I'm gonna mop this weekend. So please ignore all of the clay. I've just been so busy and we've had lots of classes so I just haven't had a chance to um, tidy up but I'm gonna do that soon. But yeah, anyway, this is my wheel. I have the Rhoda wheel. Um, I love it. I just prop it up on these blocks so that I can stand, um, throw standing up and then I just have a um, mirror, hey, <laughs> and um, a throwing gauge as well. So um, yeah, I just wanted to show you how I centre. I know um, this can be a bit tricky for some people. A lot of people tap centre and that's how I was taught, but I quite like using a needle to centre. I basically just like try to pop my pot into the middle of the wheel using the rings. And then I kind of have a look. So I can see that it's coming towards me in some points. So once it rotates, so I kind of look where it's approaching me and I try to stop there so I can push it away. So yeah, I can see that the rim is just off centre so I'll stop it when it, it's coming towards me. So that looks a bit better to me now. And then I'll just check with the needle. So I just run the needle th over the base and that's actually looking pretty even. If it's off centre you'll get a a deeper kind of groove where it's um, kind of more towards you and if that happens you can push that more into centre. Um, so maybe I'll show you, so say it'll be off centre so this pot, so this side of the pot is is closer to me than the other side because you can see the ring is, there's more space with the ring here at the back. Um, which you can see when I start the wheel, you can see that's really off centre, right? And so if I test with the needle at the top, you can see that it will just um, make a mark on one side. And so if I actually just try to find that mark, um, so you can see here I've made a groove here and it hasn't done it on the other side. And exactly that's kind of, you can also see with the throwing rings. So I'll just shimmy that forward and test again and I can still see it's a little bit off centre so I'll just try to find that again so it's here I can see that that's a bit too far towards me so I'll push that over a bit and then start again and you can basically just keep doing that until you've centred it but I like to first start by eye so I get it pretty roughly in the like as cent as centered as possible before I do the mark and I just mainly do the needle mark just to check it's in center <laughs> so I would say that's pretty much in center now it's not really leaving any groove more in one place than the other so yeah um I hope that makes sense. I sorry I didn't I might not have explained that properly, but yeah, I kind of found when I was learning that was much easier. I kind of do it more by eye now and I just use a needle to check that it's definitely in centre. But um I find the tapping bit that you can always like tap it like um like a bit too hard and just it goes out of centre. So yeah, I mean uh, there's loads of ways so I just thought I'd share that if you guys want to give that a go. Um, I also have actually bought the grip, the Giffin grip, is it called the Griffin or the Giffin grip? Um, so I'm excited to give that a go. So that basically just has arms to hold your pot, it's like attachment for your wheel and then it has arms. Um, but annoyingly my wheel, it's made by, so my wheel is European and the Giffin grip is made by, is it made from the US so because of the difference with the imperial and metric I'm having problems with lining up my bat pins so I'm hoping that I can get an adapter and then kind of put that on. So I always make sure, sorry I'll be a bit wobbly when I'm doing this, but I always make sure when I, I always attach vlogs but just make sure you brace the pot before you attach so that you don't push your pot out of centre again which is, happens, does happen. So 
So for these teacups, I trim a is it seven centimeters, seven centimeters. So I just mark that on with a ruler. For the for these, I do a very simple foot. If you can see that, but I've just marked like seven centimeter diameter with a ruler. And then I first hollow out the middle. So I kind of use this kind of small throwing gauge just to, and I kind of poke it in at an angle to hollow out. So trim out the middle of my foot. For my mugs, I don't really like to do a very ornate foot. I quite like to just keep it quite simple. I think the form is kind of interesting enough that I just like like to keep the bottom quite simple compared to like my Unomis where they're kind of more straight I then um, carve like I trim a nicer foot basically so once the middle's out then I go back and just smooth that over And it always, when I do this, I always make sure I hold the tool very close to the actual um, loop so that I have most control. And I always hold with two hands. And I always try to brace my arms on the wheel pan. So that's the middle. And so I'm gonna carve the outside. I just have a bigger one just to carve the outside. I don't really do much, I just kind of join up the outside to that foot I've just made and then just carve a very um, kind of soft curve in the base. Because these key tea teacups are round, I like to just keep the base quite, I just extend the form into the base basically, like that roundness. So yeah, I carved the foot in and then just trimmed the sides and I just go over with the sponge just to soften any kind of carving marks because I have grogged clay, you get particles and sometimes they can run into the um, clay and leave a line. So I just smooth that off. But because this clay is quite gritty, I also use a rib just to, I guess like semi burnish the surface so that any grit that's come to the surface from using the sponge, I kind of push back down and it's like nice and smooth again. And then I just have a my maker's mark and I just push that into the side. Like that. And then that's it. So I'm gonna, I'll probably give this a bit of a spritz just so it doesn't dry out too much. So that's it. That's my teacup. And um, I'll show you the base. So yeah, I've just carved a foot and then that's my maker's mark. And so yeah, when I attach the handle, I usually attach it from this bit and it will come out like this. But yeah, I'll probably show you that once I've done it. So now I'm gonna do the lid and the strainer and then I'll show you how they look together. So because this is gonna be a tea strainer, I'm just using this like little drill tool just to make lots of holes so that the water can get through but the um, tea stays in the strainer. And I always um, just leave it to dry, to bone dry before I deal with these bits that have kind of uh, been pushed out, like these kind of burrs that um, I want to clean up before I biscuit. But if I do it now, it will like smush everywhere. So if you let it kind of, if I'm talking about these like little bitties around the hole, if you let it dry to bone dry, what I do is then get some like sandpaper and just sand them and then it just like comes off. So I find that the easiest way. So yeah, that's the strainer. 
so I'll just show you what I mean. So with this teacup, the strainer just plops in like that. So that, imagine with a handle, um, so that you can brew your tea, um, to, like your loose leaf tea, inside. I'm going to be doing the lid now. So um, I actually just throw a shallow bowl um, to be the lid and I just make sure I just leave a lot in the base so that I can um, trim a little uh, knob on the top. And um, the knob I want to trim on the top is going to be four centimeters wide. So I first just flatten off the top really gently and then I'm going to mark the knob um, diameter so that I know it's, yep, so it's going to be four centimeters, just like that. And then I'll start by trimming off the outside. kind of nearly there so I'll stop and then I'll just shape the um, the kind of the lid shape before I finish off the little handle at the top so I just want this to be kind of a rounded lid so I'll just do that first something like that then I'm going to switch to a, just a bit of a smaller tool just to cut the knob and because I'm going to be, this is a lid so I want the um, it be easy to pick up so I'm going to um, trim in a little bit of bevel into the um, knob at the top so that it's easier to hold. Do you know? So it's basically just going in uh, like a diagonal. Something like that, and then I'll just come and redo the shape of the lid. And then, so that's kind of how I'd like the lid to be. So I'm going to next just carve away some of the excess in the middle. So I'll just do that by rotating the tool and just poke it in. And that should get most of the excess from the middle of the knob. That's the lid of the tea set. So I'll show you now them kind of all together. Um, yeah, so I, I forgot I actually have this. So this is a order for someone. So the idea is that the lid kind of can be sw um, flipped over and then the tea strainer can be plopped onto the uh, lid. It, once you've brewed your tea, you can have set it there. And then this is the mug with the handle. So I just think they're a really cute like little set um, and they actually make really nice gifts if you know like a kind of a tea enthusiast. They're like a little bit different and I just think they look really lovely. So I'm just getting around to doing the juicer. Um, I've done one. So I basically just carved this like little, um, it's like a kind of a cute little mountain um, to juice um, your citrus fruits. <laughs> So yeah, I have this and then I kind of use this, uh, it's like a DIY tool for carving, um, to carve the strips. So what I do is just follow the length of the cone and take out segments so that it kind of looks like a mountain. So that's the first one I've kind of just gone down. And then when I do the second one, I try to 
orientated so when I carve down I can kind of rip a little bit and then that should give a bit of texture maybe if you can see there and I just keep doing that as I go around oh that one worked quite nicely so hopefully you can see that there's like a bit of texture where the clay's ripped so you get this kind of effect of um, a bit of texture then it's like smooth clay when it's like textured clay so that you can kind of see the difference and it makes it kind of look like a little bit of a mountain like kind of rocky which I think is nice and I do this when the clay is um, not too hard kind of a bit softer than leather hard kind of when you when I'm trimming this this is a little bit softer than I probably would normally trim but it's just so that I know I can um, have um, the right consistency for carving the this bit of the juicer and then once I've done that so I'll show you so yeah that's the, the kind of the textured carvings and when I've done that I just kind of finish up the top so I just extend what I've carved into the top just so that it's comes into a point at the top So one juicer done. Hey, so I'm just doing some handles, um, attaching those handles I pulled. Um, it's the next day, so I've um, they've dried out a little bit, which is good um, so that they hold their shape when I'm attaching them. Um, so I've just got my trimmed mugs and teacups here, and I just I plopped a I popped them under some plastic just so they didn't dry out too much, because you still want to be able to bend them and shape them on the cup just to make sure it is like a nice handle so yeah I've already done this one so I usually just like let the slip dry out a bit before I finish it up so that it's like a really nice attachment so I'll pop you down so you can see me doing the rest yeah so this is the teacup sorry if it's a bit steamy that it's a bit cold in the studio today so the lens is steamed up a little bit but yeah, I'm going to attach this handle. So I've already cut the ends and what I do is normally just um, kind of offer it up to the mug so that I know it's going to be like a nice fit. So something like that, I know that, that fits well and I just adjust it um, slightly every time just so that um, it fits really nicely on the mug. Then I just slip and score. So I just use one of these kind of... Um, serrated kidneys to um, score some texture onto the attachment points. I do the same on the handle. And then I just use some liquid clay, so slip, um, just to act as the glue. So I just have some here. I normally just get it out of my slops bucket. I'm never um, kind of prepared enough to have it um, already made up in a cup, in a pot like some people have. But yeah, just any slip. If you're having problems with your handles cracking, I've heard if you add vinegar to dry clay and form a slip with that, that actually helps to pull the um, kind of the clay particles together as they dry so that you don't get too much of a cracking problem but I find that if I my handle and my mug are the same consistency so one isn't too dry and one isn't too wet and that I dry them slowly under plastic that's usually fine I don't usually crack the handles don't usually crack so yeah I've just kind of slipped both the handle and the cup and then I usually attach the top first and I kind of put it into place and I give it a little wiggle and I always brace the other side of the cup with my hand so that I don't deform the rim and then once I'm happy with the placement I then kind of attach the bottom and then I also just make sure it lines up so that the handle is fairly straight and then I usually just um, 
smooth over the bottom of the handle so that that's a nice join. I get a sponge at this stage, so I sometimes do it with my finger, but a sponge just really helps to smooth off that side. So I just normally do the bottom, just so that that definitely has a nice um, attachment to the mug. So that's like a nice finish. And then with the top, I set the mug down and then just give it a last wiggle and just push it in just so it has a really good contact while it dries. And sometimes what I'll do is actually smooth over the underside of the mug, sorry, of the handle, similar to how I did at the bottom attachment point, just so that that is really nice and attached as well. So I don't know if you can see, but just under there, I've just smoothed off that bit. And then I just kind of make sure that that top is really squished down. And then I'll set that aside to dry out a bit. And you're looking for the slip to become matte so that I can then do the last finishing off. So what I mean by that is you can see that, yeah, in some areas, the slip has gone a bit matte. Where it's shiny there, it's a bit matte up here. So you can see that that's drying. So that's nearly ready to do. I'll do one more and then I'll come back and finish that one off. So I usually just use like a kind of this little potter's knife and I just kind of go over each side. Maybe I can do it this way around so you can see. I kind of go over the edge just so that there's a really nice join and it's unlikely to crack. This also helps it to stop cracking as well, just so that the join is really well secured. I do that at the bottom as well. I kind of do that a bit roughly and then I'll finish it off with a sponge. So I just go over the whole join with a sponge. I actually recommend these kind of tapered sponges because the point kind of really gets in there and it just helps just to smooth over the kind of join. And sometimes if I find that it's a bit bulgy, I'll just smooth it over with my finger, say that the, this part is quite thick. I'll just kind of smooth that over with my finger just so it's not so bulky. And it also just helps to um, refine that join. So that's the teacup done. Like that. So what I normally do is just set these aside. I kind of just set these aside here. Um, and I'll just cover it in plastic once I've done them all. Um, then once I know that they've like dried out nicely, I'll take them into the house and so that they can like fully dry. I've just been throwing and um, I've done quite a lot actually. I'll just show you. So I've just done some bowls, plates, some more bowls and some dishes. And then these are just some big custom mugs. So I have a couple of bowls left and I just wanted to show you the last of my plates. So I'm just doing two more plates. I use these bats from Hartley and Noble. They're really nice actually. They have these kind of, um, they call them invisible bat pins. So they're like little holes that they machine on the back but not all the way through. So that means that you can use the whole um, area of the bat to make um, plates. So you can throw it all the way up to the edge. I These are actually my smaller plates, but I also do like dinner sized plates, which I need to go up to pretty much the edge of the bat. Um, and they just fix on bat pins. So I have one ready. Um, I'll just pop you down and hopefully you'll be able to see. My everyday plates which are kind of like a bit, a bit, it's a bit um, smaller than a normal dinner size plate, but I quite like using them for most things. I never really loved big dinner plates, so I think these are quite nice. You can kind of use them as like a large side plate or just um, for most things. I have them, you know, for salads or whatever, just things that don't require like a massive plate, like Sunday roast or those kind of things, just your everyday kind of meals in the week. So I use um, 700 grams of clay. This is um, iron speckled clay. 
so it gives like nice speckles um, when it's fired and I'm gonna sorry if the camera wobbles a bit I've it just propped you actually on my wheel um, I'm gonna just throw it down in the middle I've wetted the board a bit already so it's moist and then I just start so yeah this guy is pretty off center so what I do is normally brace my arms to the wheel pan I actually throw standing up so that I can it's better for my back and also means I can put my weight over and then with my left hand I grip the ball of clay and I'm gonna push with this kind of area of my hand and also grip with my fingers as well and with my other hand I just push down so I just brace myself and then I kind of push it forward and I'm also gripping it with my fingers as well so it's nicely in the center every time it kind of gets um, dry I make sure I water, um, add more water just because the stickiness of it sticking to your hands throws it off center And I just cone it up and down so I'm using this part of my hand on each side to push it in from the bottom so that it cones up sometimes it gets a bit dry as I do this so I just add a bit more water and as I get to the top I kind of use my whole hand just to form it into a cone at the top and I'll probably just go one more time just to make sure I've taken everything up from the bottom. It's quite normal to have quite a lot of clay skirting at the bottom, so I just try to make sure I grab all of that, centre it right to the base. And then I'll push it back down. So with this hand I brace the back and I have my thumb just on top and I'll push down from this side forward with my other hand. So it pushes down forward and then I go straight down it kind of naturally bounces back and this is I do it this way most potters do it this way just so that you don't get that mushroom effect and then I just put it down into a dome again just make sure it's centered into this kind of hockey puck kind of shape so because I'm throwing plates I actually have like a little trick that I use I use a rolling pin just to get it really flat I find that um, kind of saves my hands really like going over it a lot and it just makes a nice flat wide disc is what I want for a plate so I get a rolling pin make sure my clay is wet and then I just basically put the rolling pin down on top and start to push with like an even downward force so that it kind of pancakes out into a plate I just take it off gently so that's just like an easy tip if you want to make plates on the wheel I just push the little bit down in the middle and then for the just to bring the sides up I just run my finger along the edge and push in and that will naturally bring the clay up at the edges because my plates have a little bit of a rim I find that the easiest way just to make that rim. <laughs> yeah, with the rim I always add water because it's quite easy to make that rim go out of centre because it's so wide on the plate. And then I'll measure. So I want to, I want the plate to be about 24 centimeters wide and two centimeters high so I just need to increase the height of the rim and here I'll just kind of push up from the bottom and basically just pinch the clay up really gently on the side and then just compress the rim Just measure again okay so that's about 24 two centimeters high so I need to I do a taper on the um, rim so I'm gonna do that now so I just use these kind of ribs that have a taper 
so it's kind of like beveling the outside in a way it's like a 45 degree angle and that means I know that the same angle is the all my plates have the same angle I actually got this specially made for Hartley and Noble but they have similar ribs um, which are really good so I just kind of offer that up and bring that up to the edge of the plate push that in so that it has a bit of a bevel on the edge and then I'll just even that out a bit just so it's yeah I'll just do a measure again I have a feeling it's got a bit high so yeah it's the right width yeah it's a little bit high so I'm just going to cut the rim off some rim size about half a centimeter too high so I just use a needle tool and I just cut off about half a centimeter off the rim try to get it ooh, in one <laughs> it never there's always one bit that gets stuck but yeah and then I just use a chamois cloth, cloth just to compress that rim down to a nicer shape So then I'll just clean up the middle, just with a sponge taking any water or slip away from the middle. And then I usually do like a little swirl in the middle. Yeah, I just quite like to add a swirl just because my glazes interact better on um, different surfaces. So adding that swirl just makes the glaze look a bit prettier. And because the glaze kind of fills it in, it, it, it does um, level itself out. So that's the plate. I'm gonna just clean up the outside with a sponge. And then I will, I use this kind of metal pointy tool just to um, trim off the excess around the side. I don't leave, I don't um, wire these off, the bats just let them pop off naturally when they dry but I find if I leave a bit of a skirt of clay or some clay coming out the edge sometimes it can crack into the plate so I just make sure I cut off um, just around the outside because I'll come to trim it later. And that's it, that's one done. So yeah that's the plate and then just so you can kind of see what I mean about the edge it kind of goes off in like a 45 degree angle and yeah but yeah I love these bats I love throwing plates on them it just makes it much easier. Um, yeah so that's um, I'm just going to do one more and then I think I'll finish up I've loaded the kiln today with um, some cottages and some pre-orders so I think I'll end the vlog when um, I unload that kiln I thought it'd be nice for you guys to see that hey friends so I said that I would show the kiln unloading so I just unloaded it this morning so the weather is terrible oh my god it's very rainy and wet and just not the not the one today so I'm kind of hiding in the studio but yeah I just unloaded my big kiln so big Alice um, which is a Scut KMT 1018 if you're interested and this is basically what I fit in a full kiln load sorry I think it, it's so wet it's yeah sorry the cat the lens steamed up a bit I hope it's okay now um, yeah so I just got a load of tiles we're using for the bathroom and then these are actually some new tiles I'm testing out for the kitchen that I really really like I'm very um, happy with those how they turned out I think they look so cute so yeah these are the kitchen but I'm trying to get all the tiles done for the bathroom that um, we're actually renovating today which is why I look a bit of a state today <laughs> I haven't had a time to like wash my face or anything but yeah this plate I'm, I'm really loving this plate as well so I'm just trying to make some dinnerware just for our house I kind of wanted to make it a di bit different to what I normally make um, so I really like how that looks um, this is some student work lots of little incense cone dishes and then these are my everyday dishes so some people have ordered some sets of these this is actually a really nice glaze it's like a um, kind of it's called seaweed on the website but it's like a really nice bluey greeny dark but with some warm tones in it I've got some iron in there to give some warm tones um, yeah so some people have ordered some sets of those and then I also have someone that's ordered a set of um, two bowls 
and then some mugs so this is one of the initial mugs oh no not that one this one so this is one of the initial mugs in white and then someone also ordered a couple of mugs one jade and one in white I love the white it's just such a nice warm white um, this is for me. <laughs> this is like a little test I was doing for, to go with the dinner sets. I quite like the yellow and white together but I need to apply it a bit more. Um, without the drips I think I might dip half and half. Um, oh yeah and then these are the tea sets that I was talking about. So I think I showed um, me throwing them or trimming them. Um, so yeah this is how they look. So the little lid comes off, pop that and then the strainer sits on top. And then you have the little cup. So yeah, it was quite nice. Someone ordered an opal, jade and a cobalt blue one. So they turned out really nicely, which I'm happy about. It's always a bit of worry when you have like lots of different parts in one piece that they don't fit nicely together. But yeah, I'm happy with those. And then lots of cottages. So these are for my Christmas update. I have one in November and one in December. Yeah, I really love these houses. So... These are for incense, so they come with a little dish that you can put an incense cone on. I'll just quick little run through. Yeah, this is a really lovely colourway, like a dark green with an orange. This is like a kind of antique gold top. This is a new um, red actually, I love it. It's like a rusty red and I've just paired it with the dark green glaze and I thought it looks quite Christmassy. <laughs> this is a new glaze actually we're testing out, it's like a teal. Someone kind of was asking about a teal, so um, we had a go at making it, but I really love that one. Um, and then this is a new combo, like a yellow and green, pink and blue, and then some other ones at the front. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there guys, I'm just going to get on with some hollowing today. I've got a lot of cottages to hollow, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Um, I think next will be a tutorial. Um, I think. Uh, luster, maybe me applying some lusters to the cottages. So, with my Christmas cottage decorations, I add this like gold. I think you can see the gold um, luster on the raised bits here. Gold and platinum as well. So that one's comes out silver. So I have just a little tutorial on me doing that. So anyway, I hope everyone is having a lovely day, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.